What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Career Mode, this is episode number 126 and we start today's episode off with a game against Atalanta here back in the Serie A, coming on the back of that 2-0 victory against Sevilla in the last game, that puts us through to the Champions League quarter finals, but in the Serie A of course right now into catching up, only 3 points behind us with just 9 games to go, it's still anyone's title as we close out the season. Well they're glad to have him in the lineup today aren't they, they wouldn't want to miss out on his talents Milan. Well, he's not what you would term a particularly powerful looking player, but he's got a lovely strike on him and I've seen him hit some fantastic goals from distance. And coming into this game against Atalanta here, there really is a renewed sense of optimism around the San Siro right now. On the back of that win against Sevilla by two goals to nil, putting us through to the Champions League quarterfinals, there was definitely a chance we could advance the quarterfinals, but the odds were stacked up against us. But to win it, we were really pleased with that. Through to the next round of Champions League in the TIM Cup, of course, into the semi finals, we won the first leg by a goal to nil. So in the second leg away in Verona, we will have the advantage. And coming to this game against Atalanta here, being three points clear with nine games to go and having the better head's head record against our rivals Inter who are in second right now. We may be looking over our shoulders a little bit nervously with Inter catching up but we are still favourites to win the league too and I've said before I don't think that winning a treble will happen in our first season but it's still possible and coming into the game just 15 minutes in we'd open the scoring through Marco the Magician scored his first league goal since the one against Udinese a few episodes ago and his second goal in two games now after converting the penalty he won the last game against Sevilla. He's coming to better form right now the team's playing better as well and you never know maybe just maybe in our first season with Milan we could make it a memorable one and end up winning the treble as unlikely as that would have seemed come the start of the season but either way we were leading this goal by a game by a goal to nil going into the break here leading by the one goal to nil and in the second half here had a good chance to double our lead as well in the 50th minute a city guy plays the ball through towards Fakir here Fakir finds Bonaventura Bonaventura plays the ball that wide towards Fakir Fakir plays it through towards Donnarumma great chance here to make it 2-0 he goes through one-on-one -on -one, but he hits the post and eventually Atalanta's scramble the wall away so still 1-0 and the away side weren't playing too bad in this game but I felt we were looking a stronger team and in the 63rd minute here as Polly finds Martial he plays that wide towards Bonaventura who swings it across the centre and Alex Donnarumma who just hit the post scores here and makes it Milan 2 Atalanta 0 and this guy's been a really underrated signing for us as well because he is PLO's regen and he's had a really good season for us playing in the defensive midfield role I think he's now a 78 overall or possibly even a 79 overall but anyway he's had a great season for us he does score here here and makes it Milan 2, Atalanta 0. So he's not really a tall player, but the defender got out jumped and the goalkeeper got caught in no man's land there as Donnarumma had a simple header and gets his third goal in the Serie A this season. So Milan 2, Atalanta 0. In the 66th minute here, Atalanta tried to ruin our day and get him back in the game and at least get themselves a goal in this one. But as you can see, the final chance would fall from Cazola's volley going wide the post and behind for a goal kick though. Djokovic would keep back-to-back -back clean sheets and we would also win the game by two goals to nil. Really pleased with that. It's actually three uh, games in a row now. Djokovic kept a clean sheet and we do win the game by two goals to nil so great to get another win Three games in a row where we've won. Three games in a row where we kept clean sheets. And uh, also as well, three games in a row. Two games in a row, I should say. Not three games. Uh, two games in a row where Marco Ryan Taller has found the back of the net. So Milan 2, Atalanta 0. And again, the away side didn't play too badly. But we restricted them to shots from long range, really. And Djokovic wasn't too troubled in this game as we did get the three points. So really pleased with that. And as you can see, that was the final game of March as well. Because after that, we had an international break too with uh, Canada as well. And with Canada, I've, I've said before and I'll say it again, as you can see, the international international friendlies here. I am going to continue managing them, but we probably won't play any more international competitions. It may seem like a bit of a waste of time, and in a way it probably is, but I just want to try and see if I can get Canada to a four-star nation come the end of the series. You know, when we took over to a three-star nation, we made them a three-and-a-half-star nation. I'd like to get into a four-star nation. We'll have to wait and see, though, if that is possible. But uh, still, the international friendlies here, the second one was against our rivals, if you will, Spain, after they beat us in the World Cup quarterfinals uh, a couple of years ago. They beat us in that game as well and also following that Jeremy Haber who's one of the stars of that World Cup stint with Canada got himself a two month injury so he got a three month one we're making his Watford debut now a two month injury in that game against Spain the guy's just injury played isn't he so annoying but uh, still following that Verdi came to us and said he wanted to be sold in the next transfer window he was almost sold in January of course but didn't complete the moves to lose so maybe he'll go in the summer and also look at the squad reporters we're here as well you can see how the players currently getting on Marco Ryan Taller has grown a physical rating in uh, 
uh, in sprint speed. I, I think this might have happened in the last squad report. I just didn't notice it. But if you look at the uh, the stats here for Ryan Tyrell, the attributes, I should say, you'll see he used to have acceleration 80 and sprint speed 79. But now they're both at 80, as you can see right here. So he's he's grown some pace. He's, he's started getting quicker. And that doesn't often happen for a player who's had a lot of training. So that's really good to see, isn't it? And a look at the lead table as well. As you can see, uh, three points clear of Inter still with eight games to go. Had the better head-to-head -head record as well. So as things stand, we are firm favourites for the Serie A title. In the TIM Cup as well, as you can see, we have, we hold a slender lead in the uh, in the two legs over Hellas Verona. Won the first leg by a goal to nil. And in the Champions League, how about this as well? Our draw in the quarterfinals, it's Barcelona. We've got Barcelona in the Champions League quarterfinals. So... Yeah, I was hoping we wouldn't face Barcelona. Obviously, we uh, we faced them with Watford in the two Champions League finals. We did beat them twice, but now we're using Milan, and I'm not sure we'll be able to uh, to get the better of them in the quarterfinals. But there's, you know, we overcame Sevilla in that second leg after losing the first leg by two goals to one. We need to score two goals in that leg in the second one, and we did. So there's no reason why we can't beat Barcelona. But I would say, considering the fact that Watford are now being knocked out by Bayern Munich, Barcelona would be considered probably the favourites due to how this game has gone and this series has gone really with them reaching the Champions League final in the previous two years so we'll, we'll, we'll certainly have a game on our hands let's just say that it's going to be an interesting tie though it'll be in the next episode look forward to that but either way taking on Barcelona it's the one side I didn't want and it's the one side I got how's your luck but uh, still for the second game of today's episode here we will take on Juventus in the Serie A on the back of a three game win streak in all competitions and twice in a row in the league having conceded the last three games in all competitions either so looking forward to this game taking on Juventus one of the strongest sides in the Serie are, but not having the best of season so far. So coming to the game, I was looking forward to it, and I felt we would be favourites for the game as well. We drew the reverse fixture away at the Juventus Stadium by one goal each, so we definitely fancy my chances, and I thought we'd be able to come through with a win. And the first goal of chances did fall to us as well, but it was still nil-nil. But in the 38th minute, I had a great chance to open the scoring. El Shirai cuts inside from the left-hand side here and goes for goal, but can't hit the target, and he goes wide at the post and behind for a goal kick. This guy's just not got it sorted this season. Still only one goal in the Serie A, and two in all competitions. But either way, nil nil out of break that was the score we had had a better first half though but in the second half not much really happened until the 73rd minute we won ourselves a corner Ryan Tallis swung it into the centre and Silly Gardi heads it in and makes it Milan 1 at Juventus 0 as we open the scoring here through our number 5 Ryan Tallis with 2 goals in his last 2 games now gets an assist for this goal a great corner and Silly Gardi one of our most underrated players this season he came at the start of the season for £3 million plus uh, a player I can't even remember but uh, either way he got signed in the summer transfer window so I really do rate the youngster. He's only 19 years old. He's got his second goal in a Milan shirt. And what a crucial one this could be. Because he opens the scoring here. Makes it Milan 1 at Juventus 0. And we take the lead at the San Siro. As we go in search of our fourth win in a row. So Milan 1, Juventus 0. The away side had a great chance to equalise there. But blazed that shot over the bar and behind for a goal kick. And then Martial did the same a couple minutes later for us. So still Milan 1, Juventus 0 as we were closing out the game. And the final chance would fall to us as well in stoppage time here. As Polly finds Martial down the right hand side. He holds it up and gives to the skipper Marco Ryan Taller who tries to cut inside and does so as well Martinez makes a great challenge but it comes straight back to him Ryan Taller picks up the ball and from just outside the area goes for goal and what a strike by Marco the magician as he makes it Milan to Juventus nil with his third goal in three games he scores the important goals and he scores a goal here to secure the three points and make sure we will get ourselves a massive win in this Serie A we're going to beat Juventus by two goals to nil and what a strike by Marco Ryan Taller from just outside the area levers the ball with that left foot there's no chance for the goalkeeper it's right into the top corner and it's Milan 2 Juventus 0 so I really want this title I want some silverware come the end of the season the Serie A will be fantastic to win of course in the first season with Milan I'd love to do it and what a goal by Ryan Taller there he's 14th goal in the Serie A 18th in total no 19th in total even I think and it's Milan 2 Juventus 0 but anyway the most important thing was we got the win we got the three points a big game in this area and we come through with the 2-0 scoreline. I felt with a better team as well. Juventus, they had a couple of moments to get themselves back in the game but really their problem was they weren't really composed in front of goal and most of their shots fell off target but either way, we did win the game. That is the most important thing and Ryan Taller with another captain's performance. A goal and an assist for him and this guy, I mean, I, I run out of words to describe him really but this season he's taken such a big step up in his game from what was a good winger at Watford to a world-class player. There's no denying that. He's 
added goals to his game. He's way more lethal in front of goal as well. And he really does look a far better player. But that is going to end today's episode of Career Mode though, guys. So thank you very much for watching the video. I really hope you have enjoyed it. The last thing you'll see is me offer a contract to Suzo, which I think I said before I wasn't going to do, but he wants a new deal. And I'd rather not keep an unhappy player here. I'd rather try and uh, tie him down to a new deal, tell him he's a squad rotation player and uh, get him uh, committed to Milan for the future. But anyway, guys, that is going to today's episode of Career Mode. So thank you very much for watching. Really hope you have enjoyed it. If you enjoyed today's episode of Career Mode, then please do leave likes. That's of course much appreciated. I really just want my channel out because you don't have to leave a like if you don't want to. And I'll see you for the next episode of Career Mode very soon.